We are nearly six weeks into this bombing campaign and ground invasion. The Gaza Health Ministry says Israel has killed more than 11,000 people in Gaza, including the a Hamas, number of The Hamas of controlled. Uh, let, the me, Hamas, let me finish my question. Hamas controlled. Let me finish my question. No, no, but, no, but, no but you, have to, you can't say that. No, but I, you said you have to say the Hamas controlled. You Ministry can of say Health that. I don't Gaza, have to please. say what you asked me to say. The man you just heard from, the host of that show is Mehdi Hassan. And just this morning, uh, it was announced by MSNBC that his show will be canceled. The Mehdi Hassan show will no longer air over the weekends. Now the network is announcing a major weekend overhaul for the network. So let's get into those details. Now MSNBC says that they will be debuting a new ensemble program that will air weekend mornings. Uh, the changes will take effect on January 13th, and this will alter almost every hour of their weekend programming, where MSNBC has in fact struggled to draw the ratings that they need to draw for years. Now, the new show, The Weekend, is billed as a politics and Washington focused program. It will be hosted from Washington, D.C. by MSNBC anchors Alicia Menendez, Simone Sanders Townsend, and Michael Steele, who used to be the head of the Republican National Committee, by the way, on Saturdays and Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, both Sanders Townsend and Menendez will be leaving their weekend programs. Like whatever they're hosting right now, that's gonna end so they can do this new show with the ensemble crew. Um, now, other shifts include Jonathan Capehart's show to 6 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday and Sunday. Who cares? I, honestly, I, I, I don't care. Um, like yeah, I, yeah. I, don't even, I don't even know who these hosts are. I, no one watches these people. The, the heart of this story is why did they do away with Mehdi Hassan? Is it because he is aggressive in, in the way that he balances the ongoing war in Gaza. And when I say balances, I mean, you know, for the most part in American corporate media. Stop the tape, stop the tape, stop the tape. Did I just hear Anna Kasparian just use the word balances for Mehdi Hassan? He balances his reporting? Are you freaking kidding me? This guy shouldn't even be called a journalist. He's a socialist, Marxist, liberal, you know, social justice warrior, virtue signaling hack. Balances. He's on MSLSD, the delusional network. And you're telling me that he balances? Look, why doesn't Mehdi the hack Hassan just come out and say it? I'm a socialist, I'm a Marxist, I'm an Islamist. He's a freaking Islamist. Check out some of his videos from before. This guy's not a moderate Muslim by any means, I should know. He's an Islamist, he's a Muslimist. And then this guy to literally just come out and say, look, I'm a leftist. Progressive, Democrat, far left, left, whatever. Just come out and say it. And then do your freaking reporting. That would be intellectually honest. We know you're on MSLSD, so you're left wing. You're a leftist. We know that. Just come out and freaking say it. Unfreaking believable. And then you, Anna, come on, Anna. Come on, Bobby. Bobby. Come on. Balances? Really? I'm going to go off balance here pretty soon. It's pretty one sided on behalf of the Israeli government, but Mehdi Hassan is much more balanced oh, and actually right. provides the perspective of Palestinians, especially in this war, dealing with the bombardments, dealing with the, you know, block in humanitarian aid and fuel getting into the Gaza Strip. And so there are a lot of people out there speculating that he was let go for those reasons. But I actually, in this particular case, disagree with them, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Cenk. Yeah, I think there are three different issues. One is um, the fact that he was aggressively defending Palestinians, and you, we'll get into that. And it might be the most minor of the three. Um, it might be, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, the second is that he was a progressive, 
And he was pretty much the only progressive on cable news at all. And so I thought, tick, 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 tick. And but the third reason I think is the most, the one that I think is the most relevant. He um, sucks. And the, the reason that they made the decision. He's a which hack. Is he aggressively challenged the guests. And on cable news, they hate that because they're worried about losing access to guests. And in fact, uh, now some of you might remember, I had a similar situation at MSNBC. And it, when now in my case, I did not take the job. Many uh, agreed to continue as a contributor. When they offered me the, oh, a weekend job, I said, no, thank you. And then the head of MSNBC at the time, Phil Griffin, when talking to the New York Times, I don't know why he admitted this, but he admitted Jank was causing us trouble in getting guests for the network because he was so tough on the on the guests that he was interviewing. I mean, people really do like mediocre, lukewarm interviews where there's really no genuine exchange of ideas. So I think they were right to do so, Jank. I think they were right to do so. But I, it's important <laughs> that you understand that, both so that you understand the full picture of why Mehdi Hassan uh, was at least his show was canceled, and because it isn't so much about Mehdi Hassan as it is about cable news overall and television overall, it's that's a window into how they make decisions, mm -hmm. and that's why if you've ever wondered why is everybody on TV so vanilla, like Ryan's like going non news, non political, like Ryan Seacrest, most vanilla guy you've ever seen in your life, like you go down the list, they're all vanilla, Anderson Cooper, etc., Wolf Blitzer, robots, fake, plastic, this is exactly the, the, like, and sometimes they have good moments. And then you'll be like, hey, Anderson Cooper cried during Hurricane Katrina. He was human for a second, and then people are like, wow, oh my God, humanity, right? But the reason they don't want the humanity and they want fake plastic robots is because if you show emotion or you, you actually aggressively challenge the powerful, that is going to cause a lot of problems. You know, later in the show today, we're going to talk about the whole Elon Musk, X advertiser debacle that just keeps playing out over and over again. But I think that the two stories are actually connected, right? Because it is definitely true that advertisers want advertisement friendly programming, and that typically means super boring, nothing controversial, no passion. And let's also keep it real, media companies are owned by massive corporate conglomerates. And so when the corporations own the media, you're not gonna get hard hitting muckraking journalists or journalism. And so look, let's be completely open, honest and balanced with the story because the fact of the matter is, you know, you look at Mehdi Hassan's ratings over the weekends when his show would air, not great ratings, right? But let's also be honest and fair in that none of the shows did well ratings wise. Yep. The other thing to keep in mind is I know that there are a lot of people speculating that they let him go because of his views on this ongoing war in Gaza, that they wanna silence Muslim hosts on this network, but that's not true. Two people familiar with the move, which MSNBC privately announced to staff Thursday morning, told SEMA4 that Hassan will become an on-camera analyst and fill-in host. The network plans to expand host Ayman Moyeldin. Uh, his weekend programming to two hours replace Hassan's show. So uh, his show is gonna go from one hour to two hours um, over the weekend. And uh, that will you know, take place during the time that Mehdi Hassan's show would usually air. If you're unfamiliar with this host, as to, to be quite frank, I was unfamiliar with him. He is an Egyptian born political commentator who is also critical of Israel's treatment of Palestinians. Um, so he will now have a total broadcast time of four hours over the course of the weekend rather than just two hours. Yeah, so I think the anti-Muslim thing is mixed. So on the one hand, when the, um, the war broke out between Israel and Gaza, it's not really a war, I mean, it's, it's just Hamas did a terrible terrorist attack and then Israel obliterated Gaza. Uh, Gaza has no ability to conduct a war. Anyways, when that happened, all of a sudden the three Muslim hosts on MSNBC, including Ali Velshi, Mehdi Hassan and Moi Heldin were nowhere to be found. And so people were like, "Oh, that's kind of curious. Now, on the other hand, you have to give MSNBC credit for having three Muslim hosts. So that's a hell of a thing, I was on there before. So, and I don't know that they even knew that I was Muslim, but still you give credit where credit is due. When you look at the ratings of uh, Mehdi Hassan, like people say, oh, he had bad ratings. No, wait a minute. 
the entire weekend is a disaster zone at, at MSNBC. It is, yeah, weekend and programming. Like, who sits around and watches cable news programming over the weekend? Like 70 who? year olds, I'm sorry, but that's yeah. just, it's a literal fact, okay? So- You gotta go bird watching, do something fun. <laughs> yeah, 70 year olds also do that, uh, okay? True. But anyways, um, so when I looked at his overall ratings, they're like, oh, he's lower than Rachel Maddow and Chris Hayes. Of course, they have primetime shows on. On, on the weekdays, and, 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 and you get a sense of if they're trying to bury a guy based on how they leak his ratings. So I'll give you my example. By the time that MSNBC and I had the conflict, it was June of that year, and I had the highest ratings they had ever gotten in that time period. But when they started leaking to the press, they're like, Jenks numbers in January were bad. January, we're in June. Okay, they had to go back six months to find bad numbers because it isn't about the numbers, right? And so both for me and Mehdi Hassan, it's a complicated issue. Uh, me, in my case, me, me being Muslim had nothing to do with it, right? It was more about access to the guests, it was about being progressive and challenging Democrats, etc. Mehdi Hassan, a lot of similar issues, progressive challenges guests. So that's the thing that they care more about. And there's two things, one is the advertisers that Anna already mentioned, the second is, Remember guys, they're giant multi-billion dollar corporations that oftentimes need permission from the government to do certain things. Like mergers, Comcast couldn't have bought MSNBC if they didn't get government permission. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times they have to kiss the government's ass because it serves their business interests. Before Comcast, GE owned MSNBC and at the time MSNBC cheerled for the Iraq war even more than Fox News did. Why? GE was a giant defense contractor. So there are all these things that uh, you know Sank right now is talking about are all true. And I'm glad to see the tact because I thought that these guys, and there is a lot of stuff like right now that's going online, and they're all using the I word, right? I mean, first, you can't say the N word. No, 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 can't say that. Okay, can't pull that card out. I can't say that word, but you can certainly use the R word. You can pull the R word, the racist card. Oh yeah, you can do that. The B card, you're a bigot. Oh yeah, that's right. And now there was another I word that they were using because it, guess what? The R word really wasn't working. The B word wasn't working, but they were using the I word, which was insurrectionist oh you're an insurrectionist oh no i'd rather be a bigot don't call me an insurrectionist call me a bigot i mean after a while it was like bigot and racist didn't have anything it doesn't work anymore they use it every freaking you know second of the day doesn't mean a damn thing but call somebody an insurrectionist and now they're pulling out the other i word Islamophobic. And there's a lot on the internet that's going out there. Oh, they canned, you know, the hack Hassan for being a Muslim. That's why they can him. Islamophobia. So at least Zenk is coming out here. And I know his name is Jenk, but I just call him Zenk the Jenk. <laughs> he can make fun of my name if he wants to. Anyways. At least he's coming out here and he's not perpetrating that lie, uh, that falsehood, that the reason that Mehdi Hassan was canned was because he's Muslim. No, it had everything probably to do with his ratings. And then also probably to the fact that, okay, so he challenges his guests a lot. So if the corporation doesn't like it, did they sit him down and say, hey, Mehdi, you know, tone it down a little bit? Maybe maybe he had that talk. I don't know. And if he did, he says, no, listen, this is the way that I do it. Okay, fine. But maybe Hassan should at least let everybody know where he's coming from. I'm a progressive. I'm a leftist. I'm a socialist Marxist. I'm a Muslimist. And that's where I'm coming from. And that's where I'm going to go. And if you don't like it, fine. But if he's trying to, but these guys are all trying to basically, <laughs> we're even handed. We make it the story. We balance it. No, you don't. You don't balance it. I know exactly where you stand. We're not idiots. These business interests that they never, ever talk about on air 
cuz that reveals the game a little bit and you find out about the game when they do things like this and look there's a diff nobody gives a crap about the game man you think viewers are at home thinking about oh you know what the advertisers don't like it the ratings are not nobody gives a crap we don't give a crap people who watch don't give a crap about the ratings they watch because they think it's interesting. They watch because they think they're going to learn something. They watch because hopefully sometimes they're watching because you know what? They're in that camp. They're in that tribe. Other times they're watching because they're on the other camp. They're in the other tribe. They want to know what the other guy's talking about. And they put those things together and basically say, okay, we believe this thing here. That's the way we're looking at it. He's looking at it a different way here. Is there anything at all that I can basically say, yeah, you know what, okay, maybe I can follow that or maybe I can agree to that or heck, no way, you know what, forget it. I'm set. I already know my opinion. That's wrong. I'm right or vice versa. Nobody cares about what the game is. The game, who gives a crap what these corporations think? difference between the kind of viewership Mehdi Hassan's weekend show on MSNBC would get versus how widely viewed the clips that were posted online from his show. Um, like it was, a, they would go viral oftentimes, right? 100%. So there's a difference between the two audiences. And so online audiences want raw, authentic, real analysis, real commentary. Absolutely they want honesty. true. Absolutely Whereas, true. You know, look, I just think that cable television is a dying form of media. I think it's pretty clear at this point. If anything, um, the benefit of cable news is they do have these interviews time to time uh, that happen to be useful for our purposes because we're able to hear what some of these um, various individuals in various positions of power have to say about big news stories of the day. But aside from that, I mean, you don't go to CNN, MSNBC, and I I don't think anyone should go to Fox News either, like for analysis, but I know a lot of people do trust Fox News and what the hosts say there, which is unfortunate. When it comes to CNN and MSNBC, they've been trying to catch up to Fox. There's your hit. There's a hit. Fox News bad. <laughs> don't go to Fox News for your analysis. Those guys, they're, they just, they don't even know what they're talking about. But CNN and MSNBC, eh, you know what? You might learn something. You guys just, Amazing. Oh, and as if we're learning something from the young jerks, I mean, the, excuse me, the young Turks, we're learning something from you guys. We're learning about progressivism. Oh, okay. News forever. And it's not going to happen. I just don't think it is. See, that's the other difference between Mehdi Hassan and, for example, the two other Muslim hosts, which I got no problems with. They're good folks and they do interesting reporting and oftentimes helpful, right? But Mehdi Hassan is, um, he, he's, for lack of a better word, more passionate, right? And, and his passion comes just through his questions. Right, it's different than what we do. We do a lot of commentary, but the reason that they go viral is because he asks good, tough questions, which the general population loves, but executives don't like for all the reasons that we've stated here. So every time you see, and whereas Veshi, and, and again, no disrespect to the other two, they don't go viral that often, and that's because they're they just have a different style. They like Ali Bell, she's been on cable news forever. And he's got a more calm, a little bit more vanilla style, let's be honest, right? So that's a, the, the fact that he's Muslim doesn't bother them at all because he does the style that they are okay with. But again, those two guys are good guys and they do present the Palestinian or Muslim perspective from time to time and we appreciate that. So no disrespect of them. But when Mehdi Hassan does it in a way that grabs a lot of attention, it becomes a bigger problem. And then here, he, and we showed you that clip in the beginning where he's super aggressively challenging and Israeli official. Well, then Israeli officials probably went back to MSNBC and this is really important, and NBC, which they're connected and NBC's bigger and said, hey, I don't know if we can work with you guys because that is what happens behind the scenes. And it's not just about Israel guys, don't take it the wrong way. American government officials do that more than anyone else. And so that's what creates the pressure that then lets them, leads them to doing this kind of action. Well, I think we've had enough reacting to this video, but I just want to make one final point before we come to a close on this. And that is, 
I don't mind the fact that a journalist or anybody, even Mehdi Hassan, you're passionate, wonderful, either side, left, right, Democrat, Republican, you know, it doesn't matter. You're passionate, great. You want to ask tough questions? Okay, fine. My problem is the hypocrisy. I have yet to see when is Mady going going after a progressive with the same hard-hitting questions? When does he go after a leftist, a socialist, a Marxist? When does he go after the left that way? Very rarely. But when it's somebody, a conservative or someone on the right or whatever, oh my goodness gracious. They're like digging into information as to what the kid, what the guy did when he was like, you know, four years old. And they said, oh, when you were four years old, do you know that you uh, said that word? Oh, you know what? You can't be trusted anymore. I mean, come on, folks. It's unbelievable. Don't be a hypocrite. You want to be that passionate? Go after the other people on your side the same as you go after people on the opposite side. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host, Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, like, share, and follow us. You know what to do. Check out our video links above and below. Leave you with my final thought, which has always been, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.